hope you guys will go back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Hyundai Elantra, courtesy of Jack GM Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we're in this one today because there is a nice facelift for the Elantra for 2024. You got updated lighting housings, new wheels, and so on. Also get America's best warranty, being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. So that's certainly going to save you some money there as well. And ultimately, the Elantra is going to be competing with the Civic, the Corolla, and the Sentra, just to name a few. So ultimately, in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one, from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and size. You can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 Elantra. First one being the SE, starting at $21,475. I like that. SEL for $23,425. And lastly, the Limited being the one we are in today, starting at $26,915. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Little Beast is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 132 two pound feet of torque coming in at 4500 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through an intelligent variable transmission zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.1 seconds so we'll be testing that out of course in a little bit here mpg numbers then coming in at 32 in the city 41 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the elantra I do want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a silver button located kind of just to the left of the shifter if you were to press that you got normal sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity, and the gauge cluster as well, at least if you go with the full digital gauge cluster. And we'll get more into that a little bit later in the video. But now I've got all of that out of the way, I now have it in sport driving mode. So let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put that acceleration here to the test. And let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Hyundai Elantra here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one. A bit of a rolling start, but go! Nice! That is not bad. It gets kind of loud, I will say that. I don't personally mind that, but just know it does get kind of loud when you really get on it, but that is definitely not bad at all. You know why I said nice in the beginning? Because uh, I've said this in previous videos, I'm so used to turbo lag these days because everything is turbocharged for a little better MPGs, but this one is not turbocharged. So there wasn't any kind of delay when you first hit the gas. It was instant. It really took off instantly. So yeah, you shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway. That was actually kind of fun. I don't mind that acceleration, but to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 10.3 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at 116 feet, which is a sports sedan number, you guys. Typically in just regular compact cars, you're gonna find 120s. SUVs, you're gonna find 130s. Anything the one teens is a sports sedan typically. So that is an excellent braking number. As far as braking feel goes, since nobody's behind us, it's on the firmer side of things. I love it. You guys know I love a firm braking feel. So instantly brings you to a stop 100% on the firmer side of things. Not a soft braking feel whatsoever that you traditionally find in SUVs and things like that. So I love the braking feel on the new Elantra for sure. Anyways, the touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to find a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, coupled torsion beam rear axle front stabilizer bar as well. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually not too bad. It rides like a compact car would. I can tell you it rides better than the Civic. It feels kind of like a Corolla, if I'm being honest. So that's not, that's nothing wrong with that. It feels perfectly fine to me. As far as steering feel goes, it is a noticeable difference dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. If you put it in that sport driving mode that I still have it in, it is a much weightier feel to it. Let me go ahead and take it out just for fun here. I'm gonna put it in normal and it does instantly loosen up. So it's a little bit of something for everybody. If you'd like a heavier steering feel, leave it in sport driving mode. If you want a looser steering feel, put it in that normal, but even in the normal driving mode, it feels perfectly fine as well. So no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, it's actually been perfectly fine in my short test drive today. Not a whole lot of wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin. The only thing is, like I said, it, uh, during that acceleration test, when you really get on this thing, it really gets loud as far as the engine noise goes, but I personally don't mind that. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you're into cars, it probably doesn't bother you. 
I'm just saying, but that touching on rear visibility, I honestly can see perfectly fine out the back. So definitely not gonna have any issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Hyundai Elantra. All right, you guys, so here she is, the new 2024 Hyundai Elantra finished in intense blue with a nice kind of mountain overlook in the background under some power lines, of course. But anyways, this thing is nicely refreshed for 2024. I think it personally gives it a more mature and sharper look for 2024. So you got that revised front grille, you got the revised headlight housings as well, much more sharper look, like I said. So I do like that, but let's go ahead and start with where the Elantra is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the Hyundai Elantra is built and assembled still in Korea. I gotta love that. But there are some new colors for 2024, including exotic green and ultimate red, just to name a few. Anyways, to the sides, dual LED projector headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. So gotta love that added illumination at night there because it didn't used to be that way. The Elantra used to give you halogens, although they were projector halogens. Of course, the LEDs are gonna give you a much brighter illumination at night. So you gotta love that. Automatic feature does come standard on all trim levels of the Elantra along with automatic high beams. So when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So you gotta love that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard to the corners there. You also have some front air curtains. The one thing I wish Hyundai probably should have done with the front end here is you see these nice kind of LED signature lighting going across the top portion of those headlights. I wish they would have continued that on just above the front grille here instead of just a silver trim like they kept it there they could have really done a nice design element like Volkswagen does with a lot of their vehicles and just continue that on as an LED light bar. I think that would have looked so dang good. But other than that, I do like the refresh of the 2024 Elantra. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. That pretty much rounds out the front end though. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, chrome belt line molding does come standard. You do have those Z-shaped creases in typical Elantra fashion. That's something the Hyundai does on their Tucson as well. So I do like that. It definitely differentiates itself from the competition, I guess you could say. Body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated for the limited trim level. And then with LED integrated turret signals for the limited trim level only yet again then take a look down at the wheel setup 15 inch alloys for that se trim level 16 inch alloys for the sel and then 17 inch alloys for the limited although you can get 17 inch alloys on the sel with convenience package just to let you know but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now some cr around to the back of this one gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top taking a look at the back end though it kind of has like a duckbill like integrated rear spoiler i think that's a pretty cool Cool look i per personally like it at least but led taillights coming on our limited trim level that we have here today i think that also looks pretty darn good and the rear bumper has been redesigned for 2024 of course as well so it kind of has like a uh, it kind of comes up a little further than the previous look had i guess you could say so i personally like that design as well and then just underneath of it all i don't know if you guys can see that or not but there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath the passenger side there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. All right, you guys, so now since we are onto the back of the Elantra, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the side of the key fob, there is a button on the trunk itself, and there is a button on the driver's side floor here as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. And there is some cargo lighting back there, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire with kind of a good bit of storage space surrounding that spare tire so you could probably put an ice scraper underneath of there as well but then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 38 inches even for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in those rear seats there there's a rear center armrest with cup holders for the limited trim level and the sel with convenience package there is no rear ventilation but there is something new for 2024 and that is dual rear USB charging ports coming standard for all trim levels across the board. I remember reviewing my 2023 and that was not the case. There was no rear USB charging port. So the fact that they come standard on all trim levels of the 2024, 
that's pretty cool. We so then make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the SE and SEL trims, h tex leatherette for the limited trim that we have today that's pretty cool power driver seat with power lumbar for the limited trim heated front seats for the limited trim and also the sel with convenience package overall as far as seat comfort goes it has been perfectly fine and you know what i probably should turn on those heated seats because it is 43 degrees out right now in pa and uh that would be nice but anyways like i said seat comfort is perfectly fine then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the limited trim level and the sel with convenience package and the 10 and 2 grips are definitely bolstered on the thicker side of things so no issues whatsoever when it comes to that steering wheel then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys this egg-shaped key here you got the button to pop the trunk on the side but other than that all of your buttons are located on the front of it got lock unlock that circular button that says hold that is a remote start and yes that comes standard for all trim levels across the board so you gotta love that but a keyless entry with a push button start is going to come standard on the sel unlimited so all i'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that silver engine start button located kind of just below the infotainment screen there but so once started up when it comes to the gauge clusters there's two different options here you're going to get an analog setup for the se trim level but then you're going to get a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster for the sel and limited trims and i love Love this look because one of the reasons I love it is when you change the drive modes it completely changes the look of the gauges up there so normal and smart look exactly the same but then when you change it to sport it's like this cool dissolved transition to the next gauge cluster it's pretty cool it's got like carbon fiber look in the background bunch of red hues and then kind of the blue and gray theme for the other two drive modes so that's pretty cool and of course you can adjust what is on there by using steering wheel mounted controls gives you things like speed limit recognition which is pretty cool how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature trip a trip b a digital speedometer the list goes on so pretty much everything you'll possibly want on the digital gauges at least that we have with us here today so then making our way to overall interior quality a power sunroof is going to come standard on the limited it's going to be optional though on the sel trim level wireless phone charger again standard on the limited also though with the sel with convenience package dual zone climate control for the sel and limited trim 64 colors of ambient lighting for the limited trim level only so you gotta love that i should probably set that up so i can show that to you guys but also you gotta love this grab handle that the Elantra has had in this current generation, kind of separating the passenger from the driver. And that's something I feel like they probably took from the C8 Corvette, just it doesn't have all the buttons on it that the Corvette has, but I think it's pretty cool. It makes everything more of a driver-centric car because everything is kind of tilted towards the driver like a GTR would be. So I think that's pretty cool. I also love the material that they used on the doors here, this gray material, whatever that is. It's a very high-end look. I like that they finished the door handles on a nice silver rather than leaving them a matte black kind of differentiate that that's definitely nice just behind the shifter you have a couple cup holders of course and within the center armrest there's a little bit of storage in there so you shouldn't have any issues there the only thing that kind of worries me just slightly is that the top part of the shifter here is finished in kind of like a gray i feel like that would get dirty pretty darn quick so i think that's why most manufacturers finish them in black but um, I like the look of it, don't get me wrong, but I think that's gonna get dirty quick, so you're probably gonna be cleaning that a good bit. But anyways, then making our way to the infotainment screen here, eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE trim level, 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display coming with the SEL and limited. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but the funny thing is, you only get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay if you were to go with the eight inch screen on the SE trim level. So you would think it'd be vice versa, but it's not with Hyundai. But anyways, climate control settings you can check out up there as well. They got the voice memo system as always. So you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date. That's kind of cool. You got your ambient lighting adjustments like I was saying to you guys, but also your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you're gonna have a couple of them here. You got the six speaker sound system that comes standard on the SE and SEL trim levels. But then there is an eight speaker Bose sound system with the subwoofer that comes standard on our limited trim level that we have here today. And I saw the subwoofer in the trunk, so that's pretty cool. But anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. 
<laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So plenty of clarity. The bass was pretty darn good as well. And I've had both sound systems in my cars. They've never failed me. They're a very reputable company. So you definitely should not have any issues whatsoever with that Bose sound system. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Elantra in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board. But Limited is also going to give you that 360 degree monitor, surround view monitor found to the right there, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. So first, let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick, which is a dang good start right there. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors of tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, blind spot collision avoidance assist with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, lane following assist, and a driver attention warning system then as well. Then if you were to go with the limited that we have today, you're also going to get front and rear parking sensors to go along with all of that. But so then when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Elantra, I do love the refresh. I think it looks pretty darn good. It's absolutely no issues there. A very mature look. The 64 colors of ambient lighting is pretty darn cool as well because I'll tell you one thing, the Civic and the Corolla, they don't offer that ambient lighting. I don't think the Sentra offers it either actually. So that is pretty cool. But having said that, wouldn't have minded if Hyundai gave it a much more brighter look to it. So it's kind of like a mild ambient light. So it's just barely there, but it is there nonetheless. So that's pretty cool. Braking is brilliant on this thing. Very firm braking feel immediately brings you to a stop. So big fan of that. Do you get America's best warranty? You get three years of complimentary maintenance as well. And overall, the tech is just brilliant in this thing. So I really, I can't find a whole lot bad about this thing. So let me know what you guys think of the Elantra in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.